Gerato zaite este menerekin, ze korrikan arinek eta nahi bine zarete denbora ez gal... Stay here, because we are now going to the Q&A session uh, with uh, the other speakers. Jorge and Urco. There are glasses here, they're not mine. You left your glasses here. There are many questions by the audience. And in Twitter, we are now getting comments from the audience. But let's start with a question. It's for the, for the audience. Do you think it's relevant? I have been listening to you. And I have the impression that maybe within companies, within businesses, the people who are in charge of uh, leading and dealing with this, these people are not really prepared for that. Are they re ready? Tomorrow we'll see if uh, industry's perception is right or not. Are, are you ready? Do you think you're ready to, to defend yourselves? What about your technical personnel in your companies? Are they ready to uh, face uh, cyber attacks? Are they ready to counter cyber attacks in your companies? Yes. There's the, that's the question, and that's for you, the audience. Maybe tomorrow uh, we'll uh, review the, the whole uh, set of questions. Cyber security companies are asking for personnel, and data are telling us that we need more personnel. We need more staff, more experts, but it's very difficult Cybersecurity, from the point of view of training that you offer, is not sexy. People are not attracted to cybersecurity. How comes? Why is that? It's not that this, this doesn't attract. It's new. And the first students who are now specialized on cybersecurity are now uh, gradu graduating now. So I don't really know if there are so many companies looking for those experts. They're concerned, but their priority is to have a high pro priority on cybersecurity, but it's not all. There are companies interested in these jobs and these profiles. Uh, we'd like to give them uh, our talent and to cover those positions. First, uh, these students uh, carry out their IT stu studies, and then they specialize better on the medium term. Or may maybe this is going to change in one year. Maybe people will be more interested by these studies. It's not that clear that they need so many people. They're, pri they're concerned, but companies are not really prioritizing uh, that, that, mm, that need. So we'll have a qualification on cybersecurity, but it's not the f their first need. Another question. It shouldn't be a preoccupation, but an occupation, a real job. It's Jorge's perception, but maybe it's not real, and our focus is different. If you go and see what happens in cybersecurity companies, we people dealing with cybersecurity, I think that there's a great uh, void, and there's a lack of focus. And companies don't want to have their own IT person or an IT expert. They need people, but, but may not, may not inside. They, I think it's a problem of cycles. If you go to big uh, corporate companies, we have different cycles. In the at the beginning, they hired internally. Now, uh, after that, they uh, outsourced, and now they're hiring again. I don't know about the providers and uh, pr suppliers, but uh, people now want to have their own teams and not uh, subcontracting or um, outsourcing. This is changing so fast um, in the uh, sector. I think that there is a, a, a lack of people. We're not generating talent, not as many people as we would need. We need to select people. And I think there's a shortage of this type of uh, professionals. Igor spoke about statistics when you have a ransomware and when you're uh, giving service to their customers. In fact, you realize that these people don't know about ransomware. 
it's about football, uh, football game. You, you need to use your, your feet and the ball. There's a real uh, shortage of people. But the, the breach uh, and the gap is so big that it, we cannot uh, reduce it. We need to use other concepts, training concepts, to redefine uh, per perimetral governance and automation of those preventive elements that will allow us to uh, solve incidents. My personal imp uh, impression is that we need people. This is a first experience. Maybe we'll have to work together, uh, uh, matching offer and demand. What's clear to me is that this profession is here to stay in the future. We're here to stay. From the point of view of effort, I think it's a bit negative sometimes, in the vision of people. Oh, for millennials, I mean, they have a lot of ideas They're about working, about being in a company. In fact, uh, we need to uh, show that security is 24 hours a day. And we need to uh, find a balance between uh, offer and supply. And we need to match talent with the real needs. I think problem is, in fact, the problem is training and companies' needs. And our dual education, uh, um, in fact, uh, is very useful because uh, our students are matched to, to the company's needs. Sometimes I, I have my qualifications and uh, nobody's looking for that. And people started to be attracted by cybersecurity because they, they are interested and they, want, they like it. But then if you want to have dual education, you need companies to do your practice time, to, be, to do, do on-the-job practice, and that's the missing part. Companies today think in a different way. They want to hire people with a high technical profile, with five years' experience. And we cannot wait. We have to convince and persuade companies then th that uh, having a lower profile with less experience is not bad. They, they're well prepared. I also agree that there's a need. I didn't mention it, but we see a change in trends. We have a two-year uh, um, course, and university is a, a longer uh, period. But now this is changing, but uh, in technology, especially in IT, this is also changing. The trends are evolving. So don't be uh, impatient. People are there. It, and the need is not just for cybersecurity, but for technology in general, because it's a real transformation. In the whole of our industry, we need people at all levels, not just uh, in cybersec. And it's not just all about cybersec. We need people at all levels, and I think it's sexy. I agree. In cybersec companies, uh, there's a great need. I, it's been detected in the dual education that education. It's important to have this culture that students go and work in the companies because they companies need them, and mm, students need to use the the tools that are available. People have to be ready to uh, be hired in our businesses. But in our industry, uh, 4.0, I think in Euskadi, in the Basque country, this is fundamental. We need cybersecurity. We need people, experts on cybersec. We have many very, very good companies and specialists in manufacturing, especially in productive processes. It's not just about defending our perimeter to, prov uh, to avoid attacks, but they need to have internal people that are ready to defend their manufacturing operations. People are worried because competitors are all of around the world and they're attacking you and you can stop your manufacturing because of those cyber attacks. So, they b okay, they realize that they have to cooperate with us, but uh, it's still very, very slow. Xavier, I'd like to uh, know your opinion about a very specific question. What do companies need? What type of uh, job descriptions? What are the types of qualifications they are asking for? Now, the other way around, what do professionals ask 
in companies. P people are demanding a series of conditions. Maybe that th those people, talent, uh, are looking for something else in companies. Uh, is, what are, are they waiting for? What do uh, companies have to offer to be sexy and attractive um, for youngsters and new talent? It, yeah, it's a question for you, for, for you all. It's not easy. When uh, doing a job interview, the questions were different. Now people ask for uh, the hours, the working hours, basically. So we need to be more flexible in our hours. We need to work with other concepts. Out of our experience in cybersecurity, uh, we will talk about home working. This all has always been on the table. We've been, we had partners in industry that, that didn't understand that flexibility is a, is a must. You need to change. And if you want to take care of your knowledge, if you want to manage your knowledge, you have to have a good team to be flexible in your models, to generate talent, to push them uh, forward, to be leaders in digital talents. There are many people, very creative people, and maybe uh, uh, work ecosystems have to change in SMEs, in, uh, even in big companies, uh, to be more entrepreneurial and to be more open. And I knew Benjamin in a, uh, three months ago during a travel, and uh, we talked about innovation ecosystem. It's so interesting. In, if I'm not in, 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 uh, able to get the best of startups, if I cannot attract the most relevant companies, if I don't take advantage of transformation, well, 80% of those startups will die. It's not because they have no talent or no capacity, but because they can't find their way. That's why they fail. Sometimes I see people, they want, they want to become entrepreneurs, but we need to educate new generations and understand their qualities and their defects. Uh, we have a big ego because we have a great technological idea, but we can't really see the reality. So this entails a shift in paradigm, a shift in mentality. We need to transform, transform our companies, but also our a business ecosystem. I like this concept of dual education because we can't wait for six years so that a university people can get into the labor market. It has to be faster. What about training? What is the key in cybersecurity? Data. What is the key of a security analyst to interpret those data? So we have common models. But we are designing new careers, new studies for the future. We can start training people in small modules in three months, six months, and then obtain uh, fast results. Security is a complex topic. And it has to be embedded in all processes. In manufacturing, it's, uh, uh, what about legacy? We need to protect it. In 15 years, we've been protecting legacy. But when change appeared, in fact, we realized that a security culture exists in all processes, security by design. That's what Luigi mentioned this morning. Uh, talking about uh, Airbus and a aviation, there's a co component, a clear component of security. Of course, security is important in aviation. Uh, uh, cars, by defect, include a maximum security. Now we're talking about change, and technology pushes us to think in a different way, and business models are changing, and security has to be included. Otherwise, it wouldn't be manageable. You don't know who attacks you. Is it automatic or not? You're lost, and you're going to be an innocent victim or not at any point in time. So I'd like, I'd like to make a step forward. 80% of the problems that we have when we have a malware, these problems comes, comes from the user. We need to educate our users in the good use of technology with minors, with the future generations. They need to understand that technology is a means. It's not an end in itself. And technology cannot control ourselves. The speed is, of change is so big that this solution is complex. Let's generate a different ecosystem that allows us to build a better future, a more secure future. Jorge and Urgo, what about uh, formal education? Of course. Uh, there's, there are requirements, time requirements for formal education. How can you adapt? 
formal education? What about uh, curriculums? You have to train teachers, but uh, you can't be so fast. Technology is much faster. How do you combine this difference? In IT, when we review our diplomas and our qualifications, well, in that process, when we end the process, uh, everything has al had already changed. We had to start again. So it's too fast. You cannot adapt to that uh, rhythm. In specialization plans, we had this ready in three months. We had to be very fast. And in parallel, we also uh, teach our teachers, that we train them, and we have to do it as quickly as possible to adapt to the new plans. You spoke about millennials, the new generations. And now there's a great change because young, young people, and we normally work with them, will have a, a different a project, a different professional project. And, and they have also a life project. For many years in the past, we had a life project that was adapted to our professional uh, project. Our life adapted to our jobs. But now it's parallel. If their professional project is interesting, they include it in their life project. But it's, if it's not interesting, they just forget about their jobs because they're looking for something different. So uh, people think that youngsters are not interested, that they don't want to work, that they had a very comfortable life, but it's not true. They have a different concept, a different mindset. I don't know if I explain myself. I, we, they need to adapt their jobs to their lives. We need to be more flexible. They want to learn, but to, uh, they want to have jobs that c coincide with their lives. What are the main goals for these people? First, what are the, the outcomes that I'm expecting from them? What are the main uh, uh, outcomes? And what about the time? Or maybe they should work for three days and be uh, Free for two days, why not? People love to surf. Why? Leave them time for surfing. Maybe on Fridays they could be free for surfing. Why not? Well, I don't want a Friday free because uh, waves are not great on Fridays. But we need to adapt to what people need. They have a different vision, though, those young youngsters. They're very good professionals. But they want to live their lives. They don't want to be slaves to, to their work. So we want to, re, to unite both concepts, it's life and profession, and good salaries. Because they, they, they want to have a good salaries. There's a cultural change. Because people complain, but we have to accept it. Yesterday, we spoke about this in our debate, uh, and our parents didn't have uh, employment, they had uh, work. It was physical work and they were uh, they were tired. And now people go to gyms because they want to be tired. They practice sports because they never get tired when they work. So maybe in the future, and philosophers uh, will say how the future is going to be, it's more exaggerated, uh, an autom automated world with f full of robots and we won't have physical work. No movement needed. No effort will be just uh, looking at um, books or looking at screens, and that's all. My father had a, a, a just one job for during his life, and I will have two or three jobs, and my daughters will have seven simultaneous jobs. So we need to anticipate, but to create the adequate conditions so that people feel reasonable, reasonably comfortable and attracted by the business project. But don't get too pessimistic. I, Urko, you said that we can aspire to have a, a subieta of cybersecurity, to have our own subieta, to have our own training field for cybersecurity, like football teams have a training field. Let's uh, train our own uh, players. Our, yes, you're right. Um, companies do realize that. 
They don't wait for students to finish their studies. They ask them to come to the companies as soon as possible. And students can choose. They even choose where they want to work. Since the, their first year with us, uh, well, not in the first year, but in the second year, if you want to work, you will find a job because it's like Barca looking for new players, children, that are talented children, uh, looking for Messi in Argentina, and they, they are looking for kids. And companies are looking for youngsters who are going to work for them in the future. We had LECOP before Mondragon University, and we had a cooperative, and we all um, um, worked there. We were making electrical panels for Fagor because we had uh, an on-the-job uh, training. Yes, in university, in, in vocational training, you're doing the same? Yes. While companies do steal professionals for, uh, because they are attracting uh, professionals with a good salaries, they have 100% employability. Our students, when they finish in vocational training, and some companies come to f look for our uh, students before they finish their studies. They recruit them before the end of their studies. So when the, the new crisis comes to us, we'll have to solve these problems because maybe these companies will be able to uh, overcome the crisis. But what about students without qualifi qualification? We had people who never finished their studies, but they worked for a long time with very good salaries, but suddenly Nobody wanted to hire them because there was no jobs and they didn't have the necessary qualifications. And it was a pity. That, and that's why we try to inform companies about this problem. They have been recruiting youngsters, but they have to keep them until they, they finish their studies. Yes, there are... Uh, rules that have to be fulfilled. So this this is a moment of opportunity. We see difficulties, um, but that's the way. So we need to overcome th those problems and turn them in into opportunities. We need to offer uh, a good training scenario that is up to those challenges. We need to match um, offer and supply. And, the, and we need the uh, cooperation of institutions and companies. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for your perspective.